Okay, today is April 12th, 2025, and here is the next update to the pear series. So today I'm out here inspecting my pear tree because I noticed fire blight, so I took my ladder and I went all the way up there to inspect and it is worse than I expected. Guys, there were so many infection up there, so I decided to clear some of the branches and cut it back. Uh, plus, I can't get to the fruits anyway because it's so high, so I guess, you know, I have the disease and I need to cut the tree back, so <laughs> I'm tackling two birds with one stone. So uh, I started to trim uh, some of the branches, but I wanted to show you guys before I go ahead and finish. So here are some of the branches that I cut off with fire blight. Look at this, guys. There's fire blight everywhere. You see here, here, there. It's like all up and down the branches. And here's one uh, you can see clearly. You see, um, there's these oozing that comes out of the, the shoots and the branches are dark and then the, you know, the fruits and the young shoots are burnt. It's actually not burnt, but that's what the disease caused the, the leaves and the fruits to look like. It looks like it's been scorched or, you know, it looks like charcoal. And they call it the shepherd's hook because some of the shoots, the young shoots, sometimes they grow like this here, like really tall. And then all of a sudden they hook over like this. Like that's why they call it the shepherd's hook. So the blight will cause um, problems right here where it dies back. Like this one here, you see? See the oozing? And then it'll hang over like so, for example. It's like in a hook pattern. And so that's why they call it that. So if you see signs that your, your branches all of a sudden just got, go like this. And then if you inspect it, you see these dark black um burnt right here and then sometimes you see the oozing and stuff like that the fruits see and the leaves too if the longer you leave it the worse it gets and so uh that's fire blight right there so you see here there it is right there dark like it's been scorched and then here's some up here see there you go there it is right there you see how it's dark like it's something burnt it and up here as well you see that and the dark stems and so those are the fire blight today since I'm here with my ladder and it's really nice and dry I'm gonna go ahead and just prune the tree back so that it doesn't you know look so tall or is so tall and I need to prune some of the fruits back anyway because I don't want too many. Uh, the reason is I want fruiting next season also. So if you leave too many fruits, the next season it'll reduce. So it goes through a process called the biennial uh, fruiting process or alternate fruiting process where it fruits a whole bunch one year and if you don't prune it, the next year you get very little. So I want consistent fruiting. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut right there all the those backs so that I can reach the tree at the top and it's easy to treat diseases and all that stuff. So it's a good thing to prune anyway. So let me go ahead and begin the pruning process and I'll come back and show you when I'm done. Okay, so when you prune diseased trees or just pruning in general, it's always a good practice to sanitize your cutting tools. So I have my cutting tools right here and uh, you can use like an alcohol-based wipe, just wipe the blade or you can use something like this. This is what I use. It kills 99% of all the bacteria. And so what I do here is I spray it and sanitize. Always do this. Even if you don't have diseases, just sanitize your, your shears or your pruning tools or your cutting tools anytime you, you make cuts into your fruit trees. Okay, I pruned half of the tree back almost and this is really not a good thing to do because the pruning like this should have been done in the winter time when I, sh when I pruned the rest of the tree. I should have pruned all of the 
stuff at the top but I waited um, I wanted to test the tree but I guess the fire blight kind of came and it made me want to prune and so <laughs> normally in the springtime I don't prune because when you prune in the springtime you know you have open cuts and stuff like that and it could have infection to enter so that's why I don't normally prune in the springtime but I took precautions I pruned everything back that was had the fire blight issues I sanitized my tools I spray the spot where I cut um, with the antibacterial stuff and uh, hopefully it'll be okay and nothing's gonna you know infect it some more but it, it actually looks good I like it the way it is right now look how short and spread out it is that's uh, that's actually really what I prefer so I'm gonna prune it this way going forward I'll clean it up later in the summer but uh, that's how much I have cut back of the tree so let's go take a look at all of the fruits that are still back on the tree see the fruits are getting bigger now here we go we have a good amount so I don't mind cutting half of the tree off the fruits are all the way down to the ground you see here and I will continue to prune uh, there are still some that may have uh, infection in the fruit those will be pulled off but um, I will prune more as I mentioned to get it you know not too many per branch because these uh, fruits are really big and uh, if they have to share resources on the branch like that then one of the one or two of the fruits are going to be small anyway so just pull those small fruits out okay it is now april 27th 2025 and the tree that we cut back my korean giant is i cut it all right there is looking good and so what we're doing now is basically just pruning all of the fruits back so i go through uh, all of the tree and then i just pull off all of the runts damaged or bad looking fruits and so i've been doing this for the last few weeks it's just any fruits that don't look good or just so small like these here just pull those off don't let your tree produce too much or like overly produce because what happened is next year it's not going to produce as much so it go through the process as i mentioned the biennial production and so uh, it's going to be reduced if you let the tree produce too much in one season. So I try to get, allow it to consistently produce every year by pruning it back. So uh, uh, I leave, you know, like one, you know, one, one pair per little node section right there. That's good enough. So these are too small. You see that? Even though it's, it's great looking fruits, it's just too small and I don't like that. So I want quality fruits. You see, like this here. Yeah, look it up. Nice, big. So you want quality fruits over quantity. And so uh, try to prune it, you know, aggressively. It helps with, uh, you know, keeping the fruit on the branch without snapping anyway, because we do get a lot of wind, as you can see here. So sometimes we have like wind that is so crazy. Like last year, it, it, it blew all of my fruits down. And so, the, you know, the, the more fruits on, on a branch you leave, it'll be bad it might snap the branch which it did to me last year so we're almost in summertime now so the fear of diseases is dwindling down and so uh, even with the blight so far I have not seen anything after I pruned it and so uh, okay so we're on on the subject of fire blight I did show how I cut the fire blight but I didn't explain so uh, let me explain how I treat fire blight uh, fire blight, there's no, there's no spray you can, you know, apply that would stop the fire blight. Once you get fire blight, the only thing that you can do is cut back your tree. So, for example, if you have a fire blight right here at the top of this branch, you count down around 8 to 10 inches and you cut that branch off, disinfect around the area, and then trash the infected branches. And so that's really all the information I can find. And that's, I, that's how I've been doing for the last few seasons. Sometimes, depending on the variety of tree you have, like the Shinko and stuff like that, they're very fire blight resistant. And so sometimes I have a, a fire blight on my Shinko that's at the top over there. Look at that. Like at the very top. I just leave it. 
the tree prunes, it prunes itself. And so it'll just let the branch die and then that's it. <laughs> it doesn't affect the, the whole tree. But what people recommend is what I just mentioned. You see the, where the fire blight is on the branch. You count eight to 10 inches down. You cut it, disinfect it, tr trash the, the, the infected branch and hopefully it doesn't spread to the tree. So that's really how uh, fire blights are, are treated. Uh, you can apply spray like you know I did early in the season and dormant spray and stuff like that. It does help reduce the chances of getting fire blight. And as you can see, it reduced the tree's chances of getting rust. So last year I got major rust issue. This year, I haven't seen it. I think I see some leaves infected, but not, not to the extent that we saw last year, which is awesome. And so spraying dormant oil during the cool dormant months up until when the tree blooms really helped my tree. And so that's what I did this year. And uh, as you can see, my trees are rust, uh, you know, kind of rust free, but you know, not 100%. I'm sure there's a few leaves that are infected, but at least it didn't infect the fruits like it did last year. So the tree looked nice and healthy. So this is the multi grafted tree with the year pin rootstock. And so you see, I, I cut all of the, um, uh, the side shoots that I air layered out. And so I have a few trees I will show you in a second. Uh, the fruits are getting bigger now. You see that is Chojiro and so I'm bagging it up, uh, protecting it from stink bugs. So if you see stink bug guys, make sure you remove those things. They will sting your pear and will make your pear have callus and then it just look unpleasant and it will be unpleasant on the inside. And so see, if you see stink bug, pull them off and get, get them rid of them. Don't let them hang around on your tree. And so there's my Shinko right there. Again, I mentioned Shinko is the most disease resistant or fire blight resistant. So if you live in the south or you live in an area where you get fire blight season after season and there's no way you can control them or get rid of them, just grow a Shinko and uh, you will have less of a chance of getting fire blight. And if you do get it, it has the best survival chances of all the trees. So. Uh, I love Shinko, so they're, they're just awesome trees. Easy to grow, they're dwarf variety. See, they, they're, they're, they're not too tall. So in the summer, I will prune that off and they will look great, nice and short. And here is the spot where I had the uh, giant uh, Fuyu. I took it off, it, was, it had diseases and it just doesn't seem to get better. Each year it got worse and worse, so I just pull it off. So here's my apple tree here. It is now so many grafts on it. So I, I ordered new graft this year and I grafted this, that, 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 all this on one branch. Look at that guys. <laughs> so this is an experiment. I wanted to see all the beautiful apples on one tree or one, one branch like this. And then all, all across the tree. And here's the other Shinko right here. Man, this tree is looking beautiful. So in the summer, I need to wait. Trim right there. So that we, we do summer pruning. So uh, again, when you prune, do not prune in the springtime. I don't recommend it because that's the time that the tree grows. That's the time that bugs visit. And so when you prune, you, you leave open wounds and stuff like that. The diseases can get in there and infect your tree. And you know, it rains a lot in the springtime all the way up into May. And so, you know, pruning during those time, you're just putting your tree at risk for diseases. So don't prune in the springtime. You can do summer pruning and dormant pruning, which is in the winter time. This is my fig tree here. This is the blue giant. I did a air layer and got two trees. This tree was really, really tall. So instead of cutting it and trashing it, I created two trees from one tree. And here is my gyro persimmon. Look at that, beautiful. It has lots and lots of fruits. I also pruned the tree pretty well. So what I did was I go through each of these branches right here and any branch that grow that doesn't have a fruit, I pull them off. This is the one I forgot to pull. So you see? 
big old branch right here, no fruit. Usually that's the, the, the branch that I just pull off because I want all the energy to go back into fruiting the good fruit or and not you know producing just leaves only so all the branches that you see here are branches with fruit on them so here is the giant fuyu the other one and this I did the exact same thing I pruned it all back and it's looking good so that's it for now guys I'll come back in the summer and I will show you the fruits and how the tree grow thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe